Okay. So, I've been reading the Book of Mormon lately. I've been reading, um, Under the Banner of Heaven by this guy Krakauer, I believe his name is. Uh, very interesting stuff. That book, the Krakauer book is mainly about fundamentalist, um, LDS church. I'm going to focus more on the Book of Mormon today. Um, this video is mainly going to focus on the absurdities and the inconsistencies, not inconsistencies, but, um, things that make this the Book of Mormon absolutely insanely retarded. Um, my next video will focus mainly on contradictions, semantics, and uh, changes in the Book of Mormon. Okay, first of all, I'd like to go to uh, Stephen Wells' blog, Dwindling in Unbelief. I believe he's also the editor of the Skeptics Annotated Book of Mormon, Bible, and Koran. Um, but he says, okay, so if you read the Book of Mormon, uh, in the first two books, the Nephi books, you'll see uh, the phrase and it came to pass exceedingly used. Um, his statistics are in the Bible it was used 452 times, in the Book of Mormon it was used 1,297 times. Um, uh, the number of verses in the Bible account to 31,102 on the Book of Mormon it comes up to 6,588. That makes it come out to, in the Book of Mormon, the phrase, and it came to pass, was used in 19.7% of all the verses, while in the Bible it was used in 1.45% of all the verses. That, that's a lot, if you didn't know that. Um, also, exceed, the, the word exceedingly is used 51 times in the Book of Mormon. In fact, three times in one verse, that's Ether 9.16. Um, I'd like to just point out one Mark Twain quote, which I'll put up in words so you can see it. Uh, Wherever he found his speech growing too modern, which was about every sentence or two, he ladled, ladled in a few such scriptural phrases as exceedingly sore and it came to pass, etc., and made things satisfactory again. And it came to pass was his pet. If he had left, a, let, sorry, if he had left that out, his Bible would have been only a pamphlet. That's Mark Twain in Roughing It, Chapter 16. Um, I found that on the Skeptics Annotated Book of Mormon. It's a great site, by the way. Um, I like to point out just a few verses. Um, Ether 119 through or 118 through 19. Uh, let me just get that up. Ether one oh, I'm sorry, Ether nine eighteen through nine nineteen. Okay. So and that in these this verse these two verses, uh Joseph Smith writes about Quote, and also all manner of cattle, of oxen and cows, and of sheep, and of swine, and of goats. Skip to chapter er, 919. And they also had horses and asses, and there were elephants. Okay, this is talking about the New World. When the time when, in the time of the Jaredites, there were no domesticated cattle, oxen, cows, sheep, swine, goats, horses, or asses. And there are no elephants in the United States ever. Except for, of course, well, wool and asses weren't, uh, elephants. But they died out a little bit before this. And, so, that just tells you right there that this is a modern book, not a book of past. Also, let's go to Ether 7-9. Here, it, he says, made swords out of steel. He also brings this up in 1 Nephri uh, 4, 9, and 6, 18. I'd just like to point out that these books were supposedly written before 300 BCE, which was when the first type of steel, which root steel, came to prominence. And also, steel was not made into swords until Damascus, Damascus steel came into prominence in about 1100 to 1700 AD. So these swords, swords made of steel just, just didn't happen. Also, let's look at um, Palaman. In this book, they talk about churches, cities, logging industries in the New World, which have never been found. No traces have ever been found found of these logging, completely logging industries. 
Also, it's like a 2 and 18 through 9. Or 18, 9. I'm, I might have the wrong site there. I think it's 18, 9. But, um, here, he talks about the new world is uninhabited when Nefri comes. Uh, of course, this is BS, because, um, we know Native Americans have been here for at least 15,000 years, and possibly longer. Um, so, that just, it, it, it's absurd to think anybody would actually believe the Book of Mormon. Um, this, this is just a few of the absurdities. If you want to go to, um, Stephen Wells, or not Steve, Steve Wells' uh, site, skepticsannotatedbible.com, uh, at the top they have links to Skeptics Annotated Koran and Skeptic an Skeptics Annotated Book of Mormon, uh, two very good sites. You should also check out his blog, Dwindling in Unbelief. It's, an, it's on the blogger thing. Now my next video is going to focus on changes in the Book of Mormon and plagiarism and semantics just uh, overall in the Book of Mormon. I'd just like to say one last thing. Uh, none of the facts, archaeological facts, in the Book of Mormon are backed up by any archaeological evidence. For example, in Alma uh, 212, they specifically talk about the Amlicites who were fighting with swords and scimitars. None, no evidence of which have been found in the New World. There, it just, there is absolutely no archaeological evidence of these cities, of these battles, of these logging industries, of anything in the Book of Mormon.